Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about the converter tool that is used to generate work files for Charm High pick and place machines. So although generating work files for Charm High pick and place machines can be done on the machine itself, it can be pretty tedious to uh, be typing in all of the new component entries in the work file from the pick and place machine for large projects. It just takes a long time. So the work file converter tool allows for an easy conversion from a .txt or CSV file into those work files. Uh, so to begin, what you need to do is in your PCB design tool of choice, mine is Altium, you need to be able to generate a pick and place document. Uh, so in this design here, I have a couple of different passive components. I have some resistors, some capacitors, LEDs, buttons, uh, and then a big uh, QFP here, as well as a, a connector. Um, with this design complete, I'm going to open my output job generator here, and I have an entry that I've created for an assembly output, which is a pick-and-place uh, generator. And this step is pretty important. Uh, I will have a CSV template in the link below if you're not using Altium uh, that you can use to generate your own pick and place files for the converter tool. But Altium allows for a really easy uh, file generation. And so what you need to do is uh, select the following columns here. So we have from the left to the right, we have designator, footprint, center X, center Y, layer, rotation, and description. It's important that your uh, units are in metric and that you're generating either a CSV or a text file. I prefer CXV, so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, so press OK here, and then if I generate this content in the background, there will be a uh, output job file generated, which is a pick and place file for this project. So if we open this, <coughs> you'll see now I have a line entry for every component designator on this project that describes the footprint, the center X and Y location, the layer that this is being installed on. If you had components on the top and bottom layer, then you would see uh, entries for both of those. Here's the rotation for the component and then the description for the component. The description field is pretty important because this is what Charm High's uh, software uses to group different components to a particular stack ID. A stack ID is essentially a location where a component reel is uh, inserted. So, uh, for example, these top two items, R4 and R5, are both 180 ohm resistors. And Charm High is going to know that based off of these descriptions, these two components are going to be on the same stack location. So for R4 and R5, the head will go to the same stack location for both of these parts. So make sure that you're not duplicating descriptions for your components where you don't expect uh, um, there to be the same part being used. Um, so in order for this CSV file to be used by the converter tool, you need to delete the first few entries of this file here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and delete those and then save this. Uh, now we can close this file and I can minimize this software here. Uh, there is a zip file for the converter tool, so I'm going to go ahead and extract that to my desktop. And then if we open this folder, you will see the converter tool here. Uh, if you open the settings before actually starting the project, you will see that there is a language entry here. Uh, by default, sometimes this is set to zero. Zero indicates that Chinese is the default language. So if you set this to one, that sets it to English. Uh, so go ahead and save that and then run the converter tool. Now you have the Charm High converter tool window open here, and in order to get started, we need to open the CSV file that we just generated. So to do that, we're going to do open, and we're going to navigate to the location where the um, pick and place file, the CSV file, was generated. So we go to Altium Project, Project Outputs, and then this is the folder. Now, <coughs> this confused me for a while because if we open the, pro the same folder here, you see the CSV file actually exists, but Charm High's tool is not recognizing this, even though it says it should be recognizing CSVs. So what I need to do is I need to type in, or at least start to type in the file name, and then select it here, and if we press open, sure enough it recognizes the file and opens it. So that's a small little uh, glitch with the software at the moment. 
Uh, so now that this is open, we have a line item for every component that is in our pick and place uh, file, our CSV file, and all of the useful information that's associated with that, including footprint, x, y coordinates, top, uh, top layer, bottom layer, angle, and comment. Now, uh, one of the benefits to this, to using this converter tool, is that we get the exact x and y coordinates for our component, as opposed to guessing the exact location from the pick-and-place machine just by using the GUI. Uh, so if you're having some component shift or offset issues, then it could potentially be that your X and Y locations aren't being set properly. Uh, so now that you have this file open, you can uh, actually go in and edit the angle, but the angle entry here is a little finicky, so I'm going to skip this uh, for the time being. But you can edit the angle, you can change the designator name, you can change the comment and the footprint name, things of that nature. Uh, once you're happy with what you have here, then you can go ahead and click Convert. Now, with this open, you're going to select which uh, side of the board you're working on. In this case, I'm working on the top side and you choose what machine type. In this case, I have the Charm High 48 VB. Uh, so we're going to select that. And just for the nature of this tutorial, I'm going to select that we're using both pick and place heads. Press OK. And this adds a couple of more tabs to our window here. So the first is the stack list. Now the stack list is what we were describing a little bit earlier, where all the components that share the same comment field are going to be assigned a specific stack ID. Now, the stack IDs correspond to the real number that you've installed on your machine. Uh, in this case, you may have different stack IDs here, or if you're setting your pick and place machine up for the first time, you may just feel fine with using these default stack IDs. Something to note is that your larger components, for example, my uh, QFP here, will not fit in stack ID 5 because stack ID 5 is meant for a smaller tape. So I may need to edit this to some higher stack ID count. If I need to do that, I can select this entry and click Modify Stack ID, and then I could type something like 25 in. I don't know if 25 actually corresponds to a uh, tape spot that will accept this component, uh, but that is uh, just an example here. You can also modify your stack ID to um, work with an IC tray or some um, other IC slots that I can describe in future videos if, if, uh, if it's needed. Um, for the sake of this example, I know that uh, this resistor 10K ohm 0402 is in stack ID number 2 on my machine, so I'm going to select that. Uh, if it, then, just for the sake of uh, this tutorial, I'm going to assume that everything else is correct here. Now, something else that's important with this selection, or with this window, is the feed value. Your feed value is the pitch at which each part is uh, stored on a specific tape. So, uh, for example, this 10K ohm resistor here, if I open up the data sheet for that, um, most components will have a data sheet that describes the uh, taping method or the uh, packaging method. Uh, in this case, this part is this ERJ2 from Panasonic, uh, size 1005 in metric, uh, which is an 0402. And um, the value for the feed is this P1. It is the distance between two consecutive parts in a tape or in a reel. And so for this 10K resistor, that is 2 millimeters. So going back to this window here, this feed value is the distance, the pitch between two values, or two components in millimeters. So I'm going to select this part here, and then I'm going to choose 2 from the feed value. I click Modify. It says all the same component information as a stack ID will be modified. Click Yes. And now this resistor is stored in um, two millimeters apart on any given reel. So now the pick and place machine will know how far to pull the part away each time. Um, I choose not to edit the X and Y offset in this window because the X and Y offset truly needs to be set uh, at the time of your uh, pick and place usage or at the time of your run because an offset of even like half a millimeter here can have uh, some pretty dramatic effects on the accuracy of your um, actual pick uh, pick and place operation. So I choose to leave these as zero and edit these from the GUI itself, which is a pretty quick operation once you get the hang of it. 
Um, the speed operation here, if you leave it at zero, then it's just going to use the system's speed. Um, but if you want, for example, if your uh, pick and place machine is running at 75% speed for most of the run, but you have some component that you want to be placed a little slower, then you can do that here. So, uh, for example, if I wanted to place this IC at a slower speed, then I could set this to like 60, and then I could click modify. And now this IC will be pick and placed at 60% speed. I can also choose to do a uh, to either skip a component ID or a stack ID or uh, have it check the vacuum at the time of pickup. I can also choose the um, whether or not it's going to use the uh, camera when picking up this uh, particular component. Um, and one of the last I items that you can do from this window here is choose which uh, head is going to be used for your pick and place machine. So uh, in a lot of the cases when I'm working with this software, I choose my smaller parts to use head one because I'll be using a smaller nozzle uh, on head one. And then for my larger parts, for example, maybe this crystal or this connector or uh, the switch or this microcontroller, I would set to head two and I would use a larger nozzle for that uh, pick-and-place location or for that nozzle location on my machine. Uh, so it's a little bit of a long-winded explanation of this window, but I think it's important to touch on everything here. Um, so we can also look at the component list. Now this is important because this is where you're going to set the angle for any of your components. I found that the angle entries here are a little bit finicky in that the Charm High software will take whatever value is in your CSV, see if for example R5 is set with an angle of zero, it's going to take this value and immediately add 90 degrees to it. So if we look at R5 here, it's added 90 degrees of rotation to this component. Now I think I haven't been able to figure out why it's doing this necessarily, but I believe this is a glitch with the software at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to touch on how to adjust this in a bit of detail. Uh, so I have this handy picture here that describes the rotation that is expected from Charm High. So for example, this resistor that we were looking at earlier here is normally placed in this location, or in this orientation. That orientation, as shown here, is considered a zero degree rotation from Charm High. If we rotate it counterclockwise, then you're adding a 90 degree rotation. And if you are rotating it clockwise, then you're subtracting 90 degrees. Charm High software only recognizes these four entries, 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, and negative 90. So you can't use 270 here, and you can't use 360 here. You need to use one of these four values. So this is probably the most tedious operation in this converter tool. But what we need to do is compare the angle value that's stored in here with the angle that's expected in our layout and the angle that is described in your data sheet for that component. So here we know that this is a zero degree rotation as it corresponds to charm high and corresponds to the tape for that part. If we look at the resistor here, maybe R5, since we were talking about that earlier, it is not standing straight up like this. Instead, it is rotated 90 degrees in its location. So if we go to the converter tool and we look at R5, we need this value to be 90 degrees. This is correct. If we look at another example, uh, R6, for example, this is ex the expected rotation compared to the um, compared to the tape. So this is the zero degree rotation for this component. If we look at the converter tool for R6, we see that the angle is zero degrees. Now this is a little bit not important for passives like resistors and capacitors because there isn't a much of a polarity issue, but this is a problem for our larger components that have polarities. For example, U1 here. If I had the data sheet open for U1, you would know that in the tape and reel configuration for this part, pin 1 is in the top left hand corner. 
So this is the zero rotation from the tape uh, rotation. If we look at the converter tool for U1, we will see that Charm High is going to pick up this component and rotate it by 90 degrees. This is incorrect, and this will correspond to an improperly placed component when you're actually going through and running your design. So what we need to do here is select this angle, click 0, and then choose Modify here. So now this component will be picked up, it won't be rotated, and then it will be placed at this XY coordinate. So go through and make sure that your rotations are all correct for all of your parts. This, is, uh, this can be a really big problem if you're not setting these properly and then actually go and uh, do a huge run of boards. So uh, check through these maybe once or twice and make sure everything is correct. Um, something that you could do here as well is if all of your components can use the same uh, head, the same nozzle, for example like a Juki 502 for 0402 components, then you can choose distribute head here. What this will do is it'll uh, choose head 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, so on and so forth, so that for every motion of the um, of the pick and place machine, it'll pick up two parts. So when it goes in, it picks up, for example, R5, it'll also go up and pick, uh, pick up uh, R4 and then move back over to your board and place both of those parts. Um, so this is a nifty little feature here that you can uh, use if all of your parts can use the same nozzle. Um, once you're happy with all of the settings here, um, you can also go in and choose the panel list and um, edit this, these fields, and I can touch on this in a future video. Uh, but once you're happy, you can go ahead and choose save, and then choose where you want to save your uh, work file that's being generated. So here I will choose to save this LED MCU SMT work file, click save. Now if I go to my desktop, you see we have this uh, DB, uh, DPV file. If I open this up with a notepad editor, you can see that the converter tool has uh, successfully generated the uh, work file that's expected for Charm High. So we can go ahead and take this, put it on a thumb drive, and then go transfer it to our machine. Uh, so it was a pretty, uh, pretty quick tutorial on how to use this software. There are some bugs with this software, so be methodical and, and think through all of the um, changes that you're making when editing this. And of course, test these fields on one board before you go and do a run of a hundred boards on your machine, because it, it's easier to catch mistakes up front than it is once you've you know reflowed a hundred different PCBs. Uh, so let me know if you have any other questions in the comments. I'll be happy to address them. Feel free to also check out my website, shanekent.com, and you can uh, shoot me an email from there, and I can uh, respond a bit quicker maybe than uh, leaving a YouTube comment. Uh, and um, I hope you found this video useful, and uh, check in for future updates and, and video tutorials on how to use Charm High's pick-and-place machines.